This video is the second in a series of tutorials designed to help you learn Pyramix coming from Pro Tools. If you haven't watched the first interface video, I suggest you stop watching this now and return once you've had a chance to catch up. The Pyramix Mixer is a highly configurable interface that allows for ultimate flexibility in however you choose to design your workflow. But like anything that's highly configurable, it's also highly complex, and by that same principle can be complicated to learn. Coming from Pro Tools, you'll find some of this to be intuitive and some of it not, but with a little practice this will become second nature in a short while. Let's dive right in and start to learn how to build a mixer that suits our specific needs. Let's start with a mixer wizard to make a basic routing. We'll choose one stereo mixing bus and click next. Then we'll choose one stereo strip and click next and click finish. Now before we get into the meat of our mixer, let's take a second to check our output assignments to our monitors. Pyramix has a software monitor controller that we can use for a variety of functions and different speaker configurations. For now, let's just focus on a stereo setup. If you click on this button here, you'll find the routing matrix that allows you to configure any and all of your outputs to however many speakers you have and for whatever format, from mono all the way up to Dolby Atmos. Since we're doing a stereo configuration, we'll just have to see that we've correctly assigned our monitor outputs to our speakers. If we had different sources or configurations, we could assign and cycle through them here. If you do have an outboard monitor controller, the approach is a little different. You'll want to close this dialog and call up the mixer if it isn't displayed already. Under the bottom of the mixing bus, you'll see the little XLR icons with left and right written next to them. You can click here and assign the outputs to the appropriate channels for your setup. It's important that you either use the monitoring setup in Pyramix or your outboard controller, but not both. The basic structure of the mixer is similar to any audio mixer, but coming from Pro Tools, where the routing lives and how to modify the effects are a slightly different process. We'll cover all of that, but for now, let's start with defining the different channel types and learn how to create them. In Pro Tools, there are basically four audio channel types for stereo work. Audio tracks, buses, VCAs, and master faders. Let's learn the parallels first to get you up and running. An audio track is exactly what you would expect. You can select whether it'll be mono, stereo, or have any number of surround-specific behaviors. These tracks by default will be routed into your mixing bus. An audio track is a container for an audio clip, and it does just that. There is one major and important difference between this track type in Pyramix and Pro Tools as it relates to the mixer, but we'll get back to that. To add audio to your tracks, use what you've learned in the previous video. We'll talk about recording another time. Our next track type is a bus. In Pro Tools, you'll have one bus type and can route it however you like. In Pyramix, there are many different types and they all have different behaviors. Most similar to a parallel bus in Pro Tools is the aux group. This terminology can be confusing at first, but once you start to understand the basic language of Pyramix, it makes much more sense. In Pyramix, a bus is anything that is routed to an actual output. A group is a channel that can be routed to a bus. So here, we'll want to make a group. For example, let's say that we have this stereo drum track and we want to add a parallel reverb to it. While there are several ways of adding this aux group, let's start with the most basic way. If you click on the configure button in the upper right hand corner of the mixer, you'll get the configuration view. From there, you can select add bus and choose general mixing bus. Then you'll want to select aux group. Make sure that it's stereo and that the channel type is left and right. When you click Mix to return to the standard mixer view, the mixer will rebuild and then you will see a new strip of outputs. To use this newly created aux group, you will first need to enable the send per channel by clicking the colored box and then adjust the send level. Remember, in Pro Tools, our buses have 12 decibels of gain and in Pyramix, the ceiling is unity gain. So you'll have to either push your aux level further than you're used to or you can add 12 decibels of gain to the output of your reverb. But since we mix with our ears and not our eyes, this won't be an issue, right? Good. I'll assign reverb to the aux channel and pull up a preset for efficiency's sake. Now, let's set up a loop here so we can audition our reverb and levels. To set up the loop, simply place the playhead where you would like the loop to start and press the 7 key on the numeric keypad. Then, place the playhead where you'd like the loop to end and press the 8 key. Now we can click the loop button here next to the transport and adjust our sends to taste. Let's say your audio is part of a larger mix and you'd like to solo it in place. 
In Pro Tools, we have to Apple or Control click the Solo button to gain solo in place functionality. But in Pyramix, we click the SF button and the solos will follow. When you're finished with the loop and you're tweaking, you can click the loop button again to disable it. The other common busing functionality is to process multiple channels at once, like with serial compression or EQ. To do that, we'll follow the same basic principle, but instead of choosing aux group, we will choose mixing group. This will create a new signal path that we can route our audio through to process it collectively. I like to stay organized, so I'll rename this new mix group drums. Then, by holding shift and selecting the desired tracks, we can first remove the audio's output from the stereo mix group by control shift clicking on the output assignment and assign it to our new drums group with the same key command. By default, this mixing group will be routed into our mixing bus. Now we can process all of our audio collectively. Our last mixer channel type is a VCA group. If you're unfamiliar with VCAs, it stands for Voltage Control Amplifier, and its purpose is to control the fader gain of multiple channels at once while leaving the individual faders free to move in a nested sort of way. You can then automate the individual tracks and use the VCA for overall level, automate the VCA and leave the individual tracks free, or automate both. For me, this is one of the most empowering tools in a mix engineer's arsenal. Just like in Pro Tools, this channel type does not pass any audio, but is a container for additional control moves. So let's make a VCA and assign several channels to it. To make the VCA, you can simply right-click on the mixer to call up a contextual menu. From there, you can choose Strip, Add, and select VCA Group, and select how many you would like to have. The mixer will again rebuild, and we can see that if we expand the I.O. VCA section that lives in the lower right-hand corner of the mixer, we can assign channels to our VCA group. To more easily keep track of things, I'll rename the VCA group Drums. To easily assign multiple channels to a VCA, you can Shift-click them in the mixer, and then Shift-Control-click the VCA assignment button. Holding only Shift will affect all channels in the mixer. I find this technique very useful when doing sound for picture and music production alike, as it's very easy to adjust the level of a music bed or dialogue independently if the client requires a revision and you've already automated your mix, or if you change your mind about the appropriate balance of a scene. In our next video, we will be talking about mixer anatomy, input and output assignments, and reconfiguring effects.